my sister Lauren was diagnosed with breast cancer. It really flipped everything in our family on its head. I was 31 years old and my journey began from there. I had a lumpectomy followed by a mastectomy. When you hear the word cancer, the first thing that you think is, oh my goodness, what could happen here? My brother was there to help me through each stage. You fear that there could be a loss. I mean, my sister is my only sibling. When Rachi and I were introduced to each other, there was no other source of support in an organized way. And what ultimately became our LINK program was really born from our friendship. Rochi was in need of peer support, and I was her peer supporter. When Rochi was mid-treatment and I was ending mine, she asked me if I wanted to get involved in starting an organization. And that organization is Sharsheret. Together with a small group of five women, we sat together around her dining room table and worked together to create this outstanding organization. The network that is Shar Sheret reaches well beyond one woman being there to support another. It grew from a link program to symposium. I remember our first symposium on genetics and fertility. We were in Cornell and we sat there with amazing doctors and it's morphed into so much more. We've got satellite offices in different areas of the United States. It's, it's not just helping women with breast cancer anymore. We're helping women with ovarian cancer and we're grateful that today's families don't have to deal with the challenge that we did and uh, we know how big a difference Shashard makes in the lives of all families. Here at the Basser Center at the University of Pennsylvania, we're doing critical research, but in order to do that, we need cooperation between patients, advocates, and it has to be a two-way street. Shersheret fills a critical role in providing that link and enabling this dialogue back and forth. Shersheret uh, is an amazing organization, and we've been very fortunate to partner with them in a number of different initiatives. Some of these include the Teal and Pink Shabbat, which allows us to get information into communities. We've developed a guide for rabbis in order to help them explain this type of information. So it's incredibly valuable collaboration, and we really feel that this information is life-saving and that people should know about it. My sister was diagnosed with breast cancer. She was 37 years old. It shook the whole family, and because she was so young, they tested her for something called the breast cancer gene, which it really was not a well-known thing at the time. Because my sister, she was positive for this gene. I had a 50% chance of carrying the same gene. So I took a test, and it came back, unfortunately, that I was BRCA1 positive. The statistics say that it's a lifetime risk, 85% lifetime risk of getting breast cancer if you carry this gene mutation. Um, it also has a high risk for ovarian cancer, 40% uh, risk for a lifetime. And I had to make a choice about getting uh, a preventative mastectomy. And my mother uh, introduced Shasherit to me. You know, talking to people is all I wanted to do. I wanted to know what people went through, what the recovery was like. So months of going through all the emotional uh, challenges and I made the choice and I came to terms with it and I had the surgery. And it, in a strange way, it, it really, it empowered me, it made me stronger and it gave me a purpose in a lot of ways that now I have taken it very seriously to pay it forward. Um, in the past year, Shasherit has asked that I actually speak at some universities to make some more awareness about the, the BRCA gene. Some may choose to not take the drastic step of getting a double mastectomy. I see myself being involved with the rest of the community through Shasherit to be able to talk to anybody that is dealing with the same type of decision making. The value
values of Alpha Epsilon Phi and the values of Shar Sharet are, are very similar. It's Jewish women supporting Jewish women. A big part of sorority life is philanthropy, and also a big part of sorority life is education. So we are raising money, we are coming together, and we are doing good along with Sharsheret. And I've seen our women really embrace Sharsheret and rally around the cause. We really need to raise awareness on this campus. No one really knows about the prevalence of breast cancer in the Jewish community. So we thought it was so important to bring Shar Sharet here and really raise the awareness and help and raise money. Basically every year we have a couple events. For the past three years have had something called Cake Wars, which is a cake decorating competition. And it has to in some way incorporate the Shar Sharet theme in the cakes. And on Friday night, we have Pink Shabbat, which there's a completely pink dining hall. We decorate everything, and then people come upstairs, and there's an evening of speakers. Really, after they come to the event, there's a line waiting to like talk to us, talk to the speakers, and say, this was amazing. I can't even really think of other organizations that have that type of reach, that have that type of broad, wide appeal. I have you know, friends at Barnard, I have friends at NYU, Binghamton, etc. And they're all doing stuff for Shar Sharon. <laughs>
We did IVF. A cell was removed from each embryo and they were sent to a lab in Detroit and, th and they were biopsied to find out which embryos had the BRCA gene. And then the embryologist selected the ones that didn't have the gene and implanted those. So that's how my kids were born, through IVF. But when I did it, you know, I asked my doctors about it and they looked at me like I was speaking Greek. They didn't know what I was talking about. Their concern isn't long-term making you a family. They're, they, you know, they really just want to keep you alive. I was concerned about being alive and having a family. So I had to navigate that myself. Now, Sharsheret does that. So I speak with a lot of young women who are going through cancer treatment and are concerned about preserving their fertility and also women who have BRCA or suspect they have BRCA and want to know what they can do to avoid passing that along because if I have children, will I give this horrible thing to them? And there is the technology to avoid doing that now. For me, it gives me a lot of comfort to know that my girls don't have the gene, that their risk of breast cancer is the same as any other woman on the street, because my risk was 88%. What I'm saying to you is you can change your future. I think these are important areas that are evolving and changing the face of breast cancer and sure Sharon understands it, and the more involvement they have with organizations, we can educate others to prevent future cases. Patients, um, if they understand their genetic background, can prevent um, breast cancer and can prevent death. So why wouldn't we want to spread the message? Over the course of these past 15 years, Shasheret has brought breast cancer to the forefront of the Jewish community. It's, it affects all of us. Um, moving forward, we have amazing recognition from organizations throughout the country, the government, and it's allowed us to enhance our programming and our vision going forward. We're committed to continuing to grow Shasheret and continuing to meet the varying needs of the women that we serve. Again, there should be no need for this at some point in the very, very near future, Amir Hashem, but for the moment, we know that uh, even in the absence of Rahi, our absolute powerhouse, this organization has strong, strong footing to be able to help those in need.